the News Channel 5 Network. This is the plus side of Nashville. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Plus Side of Nashville. I'm Tawanda Coleman. You know, there are those who throw away food regularly, while there are others who don't have enough food to throw away. Did you know that 40% of all food in Nashville goes to waste? The Nashville Food Project was born out of the idea that all people should have access to the food they want and need. Later in the show, we'll hear how they are as an organization working to make that possible. But first, no matter where you live, work, or visit in Tennessee, you're bound to see acres of beautiful open spaces, farmland, nature trails, and recreational areas. There's so much natural beauty here, and, and that's how the Land Trust for Tennessee wants to keep it. Here to tell us more about their efforts is Liz McLaren, who's the organization's president and CEO. Welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. Well, it's a pleasure to have you because I was telling you this is going to be your 20th year. 20 years of protecting land in Tennessee. It's, oh my goodness. We are really going to celebrate this and celebrate all that we've done, but celebrate yeah. everything to come too. Well, I can't wait to hear more about that, but I think it would be great to sort of start off because I'm just learning a little bit about uh, the organization and for people who may not be familiar with your work mm -hmm. your mission could you tell us exactly what you're all about I would love to so the Land Trust for Tennessee was founded in 1999 to protect and conserve Tennessee's important places so places where you could where people can farm food places that where we can go recreate and even scenic drive so places as you drive along the highway you may never step foot on this beautiful farm but it makes you feel a certain yeah. way and that is a that's the character of Tennessee and we are here to protect that character and also to protect open space for recreation and farming and and for the future and our work is forever our work goes on forever well that is so good to know uh, we're seeing so much building and, and so much making room for progress as we say so we see a lot of our beautiful land sort of being taken over by structures but you say that if there's some parcel or some piece of land that's important to us we can let you know about it absolutely absolutely um you know we are both um, proactive and reactive in our conservation efforts so if someone has a piece of land that they want to protect they are in touch with us or maybe they've heard us at an outreach event and they let us know that they care about their piece of land in their heart and they want it to be conserved forever and so we work with them on a what's called a conservation easement and that is a, is a document a legal document that runs along with the deed of the property and it protects the things that are important for the future on that land. So it's not that you can't farm it, you can't fish, you can't hunt. It's not that you can't you know, build agricultural structures, but what it means is that it will not be an industrial development, it will not be residential development, and it will not be commercial development. And so we work with landowners on these. We've done 390 projects across the, st the state, comprising 125,000 acres oh, across the state. Oh, my goodness. And so these are places that once the conservation easement is in place, it's in place forever. Now, you can still do a few things with it, but it's there forever. And so this is, this is the one thing that people can sort of do from yeah. the grave, and we yeah. help them do that forever. Yeah. So you were saying, you all cover the entire state That's of right. Tennessee. For those people who may be in the Nashville area and, and local, is there an area you can give us an example of um, in which you all work in helping to preserve and conserve? You know, a place that people think of when they think of the Land Trust for Tennessee is historic Leapers Fork, the village yes. in Williamson County, which I love. It's I where know. I live, too, yes. so I'm very fortunate. Um, but. Uh, we think of that almost as our furniture showroom for private land conservation, community culture conservation, farmland conservation, recreational conservation. So it's this place where we have all of these different aspects coming together. And it has made a huge impact on that community. If you can imagine a lot of those open fields being covered with houses and then that historic center of the town just wouldn't be the same. Mm -hmm. And we see that 
in communities across the state, when one landowner steps up in a leadership way, others often follow suit. And so that's, that's what's happened there in Leaper's Fork. Now, public land is something we work on as well. Um, we worked on a 568 acre addition to Beeman Park. Oh yeah. Um, that was actually, we were, the, we were a transaction helper uh -huh. in that case, making that happen. Um, we, we, we protect a little tiny half acre in Germantown, Burdell Campbell's garden. So if so you're in Germantown here, garden? this is her garden, and it's private, but imagine walking down the road, the street in Germantown, <laughs> and it's all bricks, and then you look and there's this beautiful garden. Oh, wow. And so that, Burdell Campbell and her husband Ernest were sort of urban pioneers way back, and they developed this empty lot into this gorgeous garden, and now it's protected forever. Oh, I love that. You also um, work on helping to the, our wildlife and wildlife habitat That's because right. so many of us, we, you know, we love our animals mm -hmm. and um, we, we want to make sure that, you know, they have homes and that a lot of times that their homes are not bulldozed or taken mm -hmm. away. How and, and how do you work in that effort? Well, it, it's, it's, it's very interesting actually in on the Cumberland Plateau we've protected thousands and thousands of acres that connect wildlife, it's wildlife uh -huh. corridors. So, uh -huh. you know, for the health of a species, you, you have to have ways for them to get from one place to another. Yeah. So things like roads mm -hmm. and fences and downtown areas are really problematic yeah. for the gene pool of yeah. a species. And so, We've protected not just vast open spaces, but the connectors between those open spaces, especially on the Cumberland Plateau. Yeah. In West Tennessee, we've protected a lot of wildlife habitat as well. Um, and that's usually a landowner who cares about the health of their wildlife, or it's working with the state on addition, additions to state natural areas and state parks. You work a lot um, with our farmers, um, mm -hmm. and I love farmers. I grew up on a farm. Oh. Do you often um, reach out to them, or do they always come to you? We often reach out to them, but okay. we reach out to them in a way, um, it, meeting them where they are. So we go to Cattlemen's um, Association meetings. We do booths at, at fairs, um, at, at trade shows and things like that, where the farmers are coming for information. Um, and that's often where we'll, where we'll meet with the farmer. Um, we, we certainly hang out at co-ops and places like that. <laughs> and and we're, we're well known in farming communities, but we always need to think about protecting farmland in Tennessee. Yeah. We're the only organization in Tennessee protecting farmland. And you know, farmland when it's flat and open is a great place to put a house or a bunch of houses. You're not, you're not kidding. <laughs> Yeah. When you say protect, mm -hmm. if, if does that mean that when someone makes an effort to try to buy that land or try to change that land in some way or another, you step in? Well, if there's a conservation easement on the land, okay. Um, we we actually monitor each of our easements every year. So we step foot on it. We okay. have a great group of very highly skilled volunteers and then our staff uh -huh. also goes out. And so this is actually our monitoring season right now when the snakes aren't oh. out and when <laughs> and when the, the yeah. ticks aren't out and things like that and when things aren't leafed out completely. Um, and so we step foot on each of those pro properties every year. And if there's something like a timber trespass or something like that, yeah. we take note of it and that's a violation and we try to remedy that. Or we always remedy oh, that cool. in some way. Um, but you know, we're not a group that comes in when a development is being proposed yeah. and fights um, the development. We actually work with developers. Um, we worked with um, a developer protecting the two highest points and a hundred acres in Brentwood. Um, oh. So there will be development all around these two high points, but those, those two high points will be a beautiful amenity oh. for the public. Oh, I love that. Liz, what is the thing that you would like for folks to know most about the Land Trust for Tennessee and what you all do every day, you know, all year long. Well, I think it's, there, I will say there are some misconceptions that I think ought to be cleared up. Um, when, when you donate a conservation 
easement to the land trust for Tennessee when you put your land in the land trust you're not giving us your land okay. you're only giving up development rights so there's you're not giving us your land people have this misperception that you know we hear people say they gave their land <laughs> yes. to the state yes and we're not the government either right um, and so you continue to own the land you manage it you can cut timber on it um, subject to a, a management plan that we know about you can build agricultural structures we're, we're very flexible within yeah. the bounds of the conservation easement you can pass it down to heirs oh. you can even sell it so that's an important thing for people to understand yeah. um, with public land on which we hold easements and not all the public land we work on is restricted by a conservation easement some of it is um, but even with those that, that are public land, we go out and we monitor that land um, every year to make sure that the easement is still in place and that the, the owner's wishes who maybe sold the land yeah. or donated the land to, um, to a municipality or the state, those wishes are, are upheld. It is so good to know what you all do. And I'm so grateful to know that you're there. Uh, to help out folks like our landowners and our mm -hmm. farmers and all those folks who are working to keep our state beautiful and uh, you know something that we can be proud of. Well it's an honor to do the work it really is and um, if you want to know more about the Land yes. Trust for Tennessee um, come visit us at Glen Levin Farm on one of our open days I think okay. I may I have to look it up okay May 18th Okay. It's a 64-acre farm in Nashville, four miles from downtown Nashville on Franklin Pike. Wow. And we're having an, an open day there. Okay. has an 1857 home, um, which is where our Nashville offices are. And we have miniature donkeys. We'll have lots of great activities for families. It will be a fantastic day as long as the weather holds out. <laughs> well, let's hope that happens. Well, Thank you so much for coming in and telling us about it. It is so nice to meet you, Liz. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having us. And when we come back, how one organization grows, cooks, and shares food with our community. Stay with us. <laughs>